Hi everybody. Today uh, we're going to begin a series on optics, um, looking at different things like mirrors and lenses and how all of those things work, uh, how the human eye works, um, through a bunch of different things. Um, and throughout these lectures we're going to look at it in two different ways. We're going to look at um, a way of dealing with optics in sort of a geometric drawing form. Uh, versus how to calculate things in optics using mathematically. So it'll be kind of split up in those different ways. But this is just a general introduction to the idea of optics in and of itself. Now again, first of all, there are two types of optics. Mirrors, which work on the law of reflection, because they reflect light. And lenses, that works by the law of refraction, because they actually bend light. But both of them have the ability to manipulate the way light comes through or off it. Right? And different things can happen. And it's interesting. For example, why for this particular object here, this picture here, when somehow this device is placed in front of it, a image of it appears to be upside down. And if we move it farther away, that image shrinks. But as we move it closer and closer, it grows larger and larger until all of a sudden, oops, it flips right side up and now appears to be on the other side here. So a lot of what we'll see is what makes all of this really happen. But whether it's going to be a mirror or a lens, each one of them takes an object, something that is real, and from it produces an image. Now to begin with, we're going to first talk about something called a plane mirror. And a plane mirror is your average flat mirror. This is the typical mirror that you wake up in the morning in the bathroom and that's what you're looking at. Interestingly enough, when you look in that mirror, that image appears to appear, you know, in some sort of space. Uh, it's not pressed up against the glass. It seems to be deep inside the glass. But it's producing what's called a virtual image. Now, why is that? Because virtual images are things that can't be projected onto a screen. In other words, that image, as the light bounces off of you, goes to the mirror and bounces off the mirror to our eyes. We can see it. But we also couldn't put like a screen and have that bounce off the mirror and appear on that screen. Okay? Later on, we're going to talk about real images. Real images can be projected. For example, that's what a movie projector does, so that you can see it on a screen. It projects a real image. And one thing we notice is that that image is always upright. Okay? We're never upside down in the mirror. But there is something that is interesting. It produces what's called right-left reversal. In other words, if you raise your right hand, your image appears to raise its left hand. Um, this is often one of the reasons that uh, the word ambulance on the front of the ambulance is actually spelled backwards. And the reason is is because you have a flat or plain rear view mirror in the car. So that when you look up in your rear view mirror, it flips the word ambulance the right way. So in case you didn't notice the sirens and the bright lights and stuff like that, you could read the word ambulance because it reverses everything. Uh, Leonardo da Vinci actually wrote in mirror language. In other words, he wrote backwards and the only way he could read it was to hold it up to a mirror. Now let's take a look at how light works with the mirror and how this type of imaging is actually formed. Okay? So what I've got here is an object, just represented by an arrow. It could be anything. Um, and then I have my plain mirror here. Now the way the mirror is looked, it's as if we could see kind of the side of the mirror. Not the front, but the side. Okay? And um, first of all, there is this line that is drawn through the middle of it. This line is sometimes called the principal axis. Okay, this is the line that cuts right through the middle of the optic. Um, and basically what we're saying is anything on this side of the mirror, on the left, we're going to call real space. And anything on the right side of the mirror, we're going to call virtual space. Those are, you can't actually go in the mirror, but it appears as if you could. Now, imagine you were standing in front of a mirror, and you were to shine a, like a laser beam straight at the mirror. 
Well, what you would see inside the mirror is somehow somebody standing there shining a laser beam straight back at you. And that makes sense because really what's going to happen is that light that hits the mirror straight on is going to bounce straight back. Okay. Angle of incidence would be zero, so the angle of reflection would be right back at you. However, if you turned and tilted that laser so it pointed this way, well, the angle that it comes into the mirror here would form the same angle on the other side. Or what it would look like in the mirror is if someone was shining a light this way. Now notice this sort of intersection point right here. That is where the image of you forms. I'm going to use an eye for image. Okay, that's where the image of you would form. Okay, now I want to notice a couple of interesting things here. First of all, there's a certain distance from you to the mirror. We're going to label S. S stands for your object distance. Now I label it S. Some teachers will label it D O for D object. Okay, I do S. Equally, there seems to be some sort of depth into the mirror. And that depth, that distance to where the image appears to be, we're going to call S prime. So S prime is our image distance. Again, some teachers like to use di for the image distance. I use s prime because that's the way I was taught. Um, and for the mirror, it's pretty easy to see that s and s prime are the same distances. In other words, if you're one meter in front of the mirror, your image appears to be one meter into virtual space. Okay. Now, equally, the object has a certain height, h, and the image has a certain height, h prime. Okay. And clearly what we can also see is that h and h prime are also the same thing. Okay. In other words, however tall you are in, in real life is how tall you appear in the flat mirror. Okay. Now, and notice over here I have these things called type, orientation, and size. Um, type means it's talking about the image. Okay, all these are talking about the image. The type of image we've created here is a virtual image. And again, it's virtual because not only does it appear in virtual space, but these little dotted lines, they're not real light rays. They're imaginary light rays. They don't really exist. Um, it's orientation. It is upright, standing right side up. And the size, well, the image is equal in size. Okay? Now, there's an actual equation, something called magnification, which is the ratio of image height to object height. Okay? And when they're equal, that means you have a magnification of 1. Okay? You're 1 times as big as you are. You're not bigger or smaller. Okay? Magnification is less than 1 means the image has shrunk compared to you. Magnification greater than 1 means the image is larger compared to you or the object. Okay? That's basically how a plane mirror works. So, as we saw there in a plane mirror, the distance s from the object of the mirror is equal to the distance s prime, the image to the mirror, and the object height is equal to the image height. And again, that magnification is the ratio of the image height to the object height. Okay, so m is h prime over h. And in the case of a plane mirror, uh, the mag magnification is always 1. Okay? And now that's the only image a plane mirror can produce. Virtual, upright, equal magnification of 1. It's the only type it can produce. All right, so that's basically an introduction to the mirrors and, in particular, the plane mirror. Uh, again, pretty short introduction and... and Next lecture, we'll go into a curved mirror and how to sort of deal with that. All right, see you then.